ان الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على اشرف الانبياء وعلى اله واصحابه ومن والاه وبعد ذا سيكند كريتيكال ريكويرمنت اوف تيتشينج ذا قران از تو ترانسفر ذا لوف اوف ذا قران ان تو ذا ستودنتس ذا كي اوف كورس از ذات اف وي وونت تو ترانسفر ذا لوف وي هاف تو فيل ذا لوف فور ذا قران اور سيلفز love is infectious but they won't catch it unless you have it and that's why we have to see do i have it myself my brothers and sisters the quran al kareem is the kalam of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is not a created thing it is the sifat of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the quran is the closest that we can come to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life in this life we cannot see allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but we can read his kitab we can read his kalam the quran is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking to us and therefore it is very important for us to feel that think about this ta'ala allahu al-amthal allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater and 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 above any examples that we can give and we do not give the example of allah but to illustrate when we receive a letter from somebody we love it creates a feeling in our heart we it puts a smile on your face many a time you would have seen somebody reading an email and the person is smiling and you don't know why is he smiling but only that person knows why he is smiling because he is reading this email or he is reading this letter from somebody he loves if we get a, a threatening letter if we get a, a any kind of hate mail from somebody it makes us angry we don't like to read what is in that hate mail we don't deserve that criticism or we feel we don't deserve it and so it produces some feeling within us we get a lot of um, mail which is uh, which is really junk mail it creates irritation in us or it leaves us indifferent you know something or the other happens when we read the word of anybody something happens to us inside so what happens to us when we read the word of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does anything happen seriously ask this question seriously ask this question because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about this allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very clearly allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in surah al-anfal a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim innama al-mu'minuna alladhina idha dhukira allahu wajilat qulubuhum wa idha tuliyat 'alayhim ayatuhu zadathum imana wa ala rabbihim yatawakkalun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said very the mu'minin the believers are those who when the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes before them their heart shiver with the grace and majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wajilat qulubuhum wa idha tuliyat 'alayhim ayatuhu zadathum imana and when the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are recited before them the mu'minin are those whose iman increases whose faith increases whose and whose yaqeen on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases wa ala rabbihim yatawakkalun and the result of this increased yaqeen is that they believe in Allah that they rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they have tawakkul ala Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described these gave this to us as a diagnostic tool to look at our hearts and to see what is happening to us inside ourselves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about this great and magnificent kalam of his where he said law anzalna hadha alquran ala jabalin laraitahu khashiyan mutasaddiya khashiyan mutasaddiyan min khashyatillah wa tilka lamsalu nadribuha lin nas la'allahum yatafakkarun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the example and he said that if this kalam were to be sent down onto a mountain the mountain would humble itself min khashyatillah because of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of feeling the glory and majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the kalam sent on a mountain what does it mean does it mean put the book on a rock it means if the mountain understood this kalam the mountain would humble itself would be rent asunder I ask myself what is happening to my heart when I hear the kalam of Allah when I read the kalam of Allah when I recite the kalam of Allah what is happening to my heart is there any change whatsoever inside me 
And if there is no change, then I, I need to ask, why is there no change? What is blocking that change? And I must remove that block. Because what is the point of reading some reading the kalam of Allah? What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, when the zikr of Allah comes before my slaves, their hearts shiver with the majesty of my zikr. And we repeat this over and over and over, and nothing happens to our heart. Does it make sense? Does it make any sense at all? My brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to us. Allah is speaking to us. We need to feel that. The Quran asks questions. We need to respond to the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one place said, Alayhi Allah bi kafin abda. Is Allah not sufficient for his slave? What is the answer to this? It is not simply enough to say, Bala ya Rabbul Alameen. Is inside my heart what am I saying? Is my Rabb sufficient for me or not? And if my Rabb is sufficient for me, then that has to be visible in my life. That has to be visible in a heart which is completely free from the fear of anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A heart that is so completely free from anxiety that it is always at complete peace. A heart which is in complete harmony. Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani rahmatullahi the great muhaddis, the great faqih, the great alim among the tabi'in, he was giving a lecture, he was delivering a lecture, there were thousands of people listening to Shaykh Abdul Qadir al-Jilani rahmatullahi when a man came and he whispered something in his ear. And the people saw that Shaykh Abdul Qadir al-Jilani shut his eyes and kept silent for a couple of minutes and then he continued his lecture. And then after some time, the same man came back again and he whispered something into his ear. And the people saw that Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jalali Rahmatullahi once again went, in the, went within himself. Once again he went into a kind of muraqaba, he shut his eyes. And then after a couple of minutes he continued his lecture. When the lecture finished, his student asked him, they said uh, to, his, to, the, they said to, they said to him, they said, Shaykh, you did something which uh, we didn't see before. And they narrated to him what happened. He said, what were you doing? Why did you shut your eyes and so on? Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jalali Rahmatullahi said, that one of my ships which was to come into port with a great deal of cargo which would have meant a huge profit for me the man came and told me that the ship sank and all the cargo is lost and that I have incurred a huge monetary loss so I went within myself to see what is the state of my heart and I found Alhamdulillah there is no change in my heart so I said Alhamdulillah and I continued my lecture he said, after some time, the man came back to me and he said, Sheikh, the earlier report was wrong. Earlier report was wrong. The ship has come into the harbor, it is safe. Your profit is safe, your, your, your goods are safe. And the Sheikh said, I went back into my heart to check the state of my heart. Is my heart in the same state? And I found my heart is calm. What is the meaning of saying my heart is calm? It means that my heart is not affected either by sadness or by happiness with what happens in the dunya. Now you might say, what is wrong with feeling happy? What is wrong with feeling happy? Is that if you feel overly happy, then when the opposite happens, you feel overly sad. Which means that your connection is with the dunya, it's not with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani demonstrated another thing, which is a corollary from this, which is that the shuyukh of the old, our Salafu Salihin, they had a different source of income. Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani was not giving this lecture after taking a fee from the muridin. He, there was no entry fees to his conference. He was not giving this lecture in order to make money to, to run his house. He had a business. He was a very wealthy man. He had a business which ran his, which ran his work of deen. And he did this, deen, this work of deen for free. Today we take his name with respect. And his name is, is, is worthy of all the respect that we can give him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise his darajat and to give him Jannatul Firdausul Ala and to give him the, uh, the, the uh, company of Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to be pleased with, with Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilan Rahmatullah Alayhi but my point is that it is not sufficient for us to talk about our ulama and to talk about our awliya Allah and to talk about our Salafu Salihin and to talk about the, the teachers and, and, uh, and our aima. it is not sufficient to talk about them it is important to actually emulate them and follow them. And how are we following them? See, see what they did. 
the teaching and, and, and the learning of deen was something which they constantly monitored the effect of it on their own hearts. And they say, what is happening to me as a consequence of teaching and learning the deen? I remind myself and you, let us not teach the Quran in a way where our own love for the Quran is not demonstrated. As I said, love is infectious, but they won't catch it unless you have it. And that's why it is very important for us to connect with the Quran, to think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's greatness, to react to the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks questions, what is the answer that we have to give? Think about those answers. Let, let the students think about those answers. As you are teaching the Quran, when the student recites an ayah which is about the glory and magnificence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, stop the student and say, you just recited the ayat about the glory and magnificence of Allah. What happened to you in your heart just now? Are you connected with yourself? Is anything happening to you in your heart? Or are you just reciting, uh, following just the rules of Tajweed for example, which of course we have to follow. But Tajweed is meant to connect us with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tajweed is not meant to disconnect us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how are you, ask the student, what has happened to you? Did you, do, did, you, did you look into yourself? What is the state of your heart? I ask you and ask myself, when was the last time that a teacher did this for us? When was the last time that we as, a, as teachers, when we did this for our students? Students. Did you stop the student at the end of an ayah and did you ask him what has this what has this ayah done for you? What has this what has happened to you as a result of this ayah? When was when was the t- last time that a student recited an ayah and he stood up and he said to the Sheikh, Alhamdulillah, today's lesson is over, Sheikh. I want your permission to leave because this ayah I want to just stay with this ayah. I want to go and make two rakat of salah. I want to repeat this ayah again and again and again and again and again because I want this to sink into me. What a beautiful lesson I have learned from the Quran. I want to stick with this. Please forgive me. I will come back today, tomorrow for another lesson. But today's lesson, let it end with this ayah. So that I remain with this ayah. When was the, when, when did this ever happen? Tell me. When did this ever happen? Why should it not happen? Who is going to make it happen? <coughs> if you and I are not going to make it happen, who is going to make it happen? I remind myself and you, my brothers and sisters, this is a privilege. To teach the Quran is a privilege honor it so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, de- will then open your heart to his kalam my sheikh used to say you will never understand the Quran until the Quran the nuzul of the Quran until it happens on your own heart open the heart so that the nuzul of the Quran will happen in our own hearts and that is when the understanding of the kalam of Allah will come. That is when the inkishaf will come. That is when shara sudur will happen. That is when we will get the inshara of the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the real meaning, the meaning is not just the, 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 uh, the dictionary meaning, the linguistic meaning of the word. It is the meaning in terms of understanding the glory. When you said Allahu Akbar, what is the meaning of Allahu Akbar? Wallahi. When you say Allahu Akbar, what is the meaning of Allahu Akbar? When you say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, what is the meaning of Hamd? Not the linguistic meaning. When I'm making Hamd of Allah, what is happening to me inside? When I say Rabbul Alameen, what is happening to me inside? My brothers and sisters love the kalam of Allah because that is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the closest that we will ever come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life. Love the kalam of Allah. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love us. Transfer this love into our students so that they will be connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalalu. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyil kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain bi rahmatika ya rahmar rahim.